It is now All Hallows' Eve, and it is only appropriate that we take a look at a very specially horrifying figure. Welcome, everyone, to another review by Briximus Prime. And today, we are going to be taking a look at the Transformers crossovers, Universal Monsters, Dracula. <laughs> and for starters, we'll be taking a look at the packaging here. Right up front here, it's got Dracula right there, Universal Monsters, Takara. It's got the Dracula and Autobot logo right there, even though this guy's a Decepticon, really should have made that a Decepticon logo. Decepticon Dracula, Hasbro, Transformers. Here on the top, Transformers, Dracula 90th anniversary. Man, he's old. Some more Dracula. And then here on the back, got some nice product shots. And then right here, uh, it's got the Universal Monsters, Dracula, and what I think is cool about this packaging that everyone thought was really cool is they made it look like an old VHS tape. So when you slide it out, it's got the figure packaged right in there, and then on the back it's got the old VHS tape thing right there. The sliding out VHS thing almost kind of invokes some kind of Cybertronian coffin as well, and just a little bit of a fun reference there. Anyway, that's some really cool packaging. Now let's get into the figure itself. And now taking a look at Count Dracula's or Dracula's accessories. First off, he comes with this little shield thingy here with the little blades on it. And if you fold it up, it has little guns on it. You can fold it up as a little shield. It's got this moving peg and it's got this black to red kind of fade here. And honestly, this one kind of makes sense for Dracula. But the thing is, I don't get why he came with a gun. Why though? The gun just doesn't seem so out of place with this guy. I would have preferred maybe like a dagger or a sword or something, but he just, Dracula just doesn't really seem like the gun type to me. This guy also comes with a cloth cape. This guy's one of the few Transformers that actually comes with a piece of cloth as an accessory. And as you can see, there's a lot of cut out holes here so you can fit it onto him. I'll show that right now. Getting it on there, so first off, the there, these two wings here are going to fold in, are going to slide in through these main slits right here, and then there's a little peg that they molded in that this is going to plug onto. So again, you just want to slide those wings over, then you want to just plug that little nub through the hole right there. That's already most of the cape there. And also, the cape also acts as a good way to hide that bat head and the kibble on his back, so this also kind of doubles as that. But overall, I think the figure looks a whole lot better when he's got the cape on him. It's just part of his character. And now taking a look at Draculus's brand new head sculpt. By the way, this guy is, like I said, this guy's based on Mindwipe. So Hasbro could have very easily just repainted the entire body and just... And since it was a headmaster and the head was already removable, they could have easily just given us a alternate headmaster part here. But no, they completely retooled the entire chest, the neck section, the hands, and the head. So I appreciate that Hasbro just went that little bit of extra mile when they could have just very easily cheaped out on it. And again, the head sculpt looks really good. I like how he's got those visible fangs on his mouth. I like the silver in the face, the red eyes. The little ears here look a little bit weird. I'm not really a big fan of ears on a transformer i would have preferred maybe if they used these as like the little like optimus prime antennas or something like that just to make it look a little more robotic and less organic but whatever i like how he's almost got this kind of vest kind of look normally i'm not really that big of a fan of um transformers that look like they're wearing clothes but this actually doesn't really look as distracting as some other bots that i've seen so I'll, I'll give this a pass. Plus, again, this is meant to be like a ridiculous crossover figure in the first place. I do love a lot of that, um, all of the mechanical detailing and panel lining that's all over this guy. It looks really good. The only problem with this guy is the same problems that were suffered on the Mind Wipe, which is a real missed opportunity because those problems could have very much been fixed with this guy and made him far more superior and one of the best crossover figures we've ever had. But sadly, he does suffer from some of those details. But thankfully, they added in just enough retooled parts, like the cuffs with the 
Claude's dramatic hands and this and the head. And there's enough difference here that it makes him that much little bit better than the mind wipe figure. But overall, he really is more of a novelty figure, not really for everybody. Kind of like the Ectotron and some of the other crossover figures. You could say this figure doesn't really suck. Going over his posability, the new head is a little bit limited by the collar that he has, so it can't really pivot or anything. Can't look, can look up and down just a teeny bit. Can swivel from left to right, so pretty good articulation there. Shoulders can rotate a full 360. They can move out that far, and there's another hinge joints. They can move even farther out. He does have a bicep swivel. Double jointed elbows that bend in all the way. And then he has no wrist swivel, but he does have that sword tipping articulation right there. So all the more reason why I feel like he should have had a sword or dagger. He does have a proper waist swivel. I always appreciate a waist swivel. The hips can move forward that far. They can kick back that far. They can move outward that far. He has a thigh swivel, though by here it looks more like an above the knee swivel. Why are his hips so small? And then he does have a bend at the knee, and then his ankles can move up and down, and there is no ankle pivot. And again, these ankles are just a little bit too loose for my liking. And here is Count Draculus compared next to the Titans Return Mind Wipe. Specifically, mine is the Walmart reissue of the Titans Return Mind Wipe. I just would have liked for them to have done a little bit more with him because we're just so far into the Generations line that there should have been a little bit more retooling done with Draculus. And then here is Count Draculus compared next to Ectotron. And I actually think these two would make some really good rivals with each other. So anyway, that's it for comparisons. And obviously, with this being Count Dracula, we obviously are going to be taking a look at his bat mode next. See, here's the one thing I appreciate about this figure over a lot of the other crossover figures. What I like about this guy so much is that the crossover part usually consisted of what the character transforms into. But in this case, with this figure, the entire crossover is both the robot mode and the alternate mode as a balanced out, like, you know, like it feels very balanced so the figure doesn't feel compromised in either way they may they picked a good mold to make this guy out of and overall i think it just makes this figure that tiny bit more unique compared next to the other crossover figures because again he feels a lot more cohesive in both his robot mode and his alternate mode and overall, the bat mode here looks really good. I love how all the silver is hidden away and all of the red paint is now all shown and put on display here. It looks really good. I really like it. And there's loads of mechanical detail going all throughout here. The only thing I could really complain, and again, this was on the original Mind Wipe, I just wish he, these little molded claws on here could actually at least move up and down on a little hinge joint. But one thing that I do appreciate is the bat head sculpt. It looks really good. It does look a little goofy with the big old, you know, bat ears right there, but I appreciate the painted in silver teeth on the articulated jaw. It's really fun to mess around with this jaw piece to really make him look like he's talking. I want to suck your deep and out of John. He still has the little Titans Return Headmaster like hinge joint here, but there is no room in there for a proper Titan Master, just FYI. Going over the bat's articulation, the head can't really move. He does have the articulated jaw as mentioned. He does have hinge joints right here, which are the knee and the hip, so they do hinge outward pretty far, but there is that cut right there that does get annoying, but just letting you know, they can shift and they can rotate forward and back. There is a hinge joint right here, a hinge joint right here, and a hinge joint right here at the tip. And then down here at the hips, he's got a ball joint, which were previous, they can move outward that far, they can move down. He does have a swivel right here on the ball joint, and it can shift like this. And then finally, there is a bit of a foot swivel right there, but that is more for transformation. So anyway, that is really it for the articulation on this bat mode. So thankfully, this bat isn't complete bat sh By the way, th uh, the weapon storage here on Draculus, you're supposed to combine it together like this and plug it in right there, and it may it's supposed to look like a little bat tail, but that just looks 
really ridiculous and really emphasizes how much I hate that he came with the gun. In order to store it, you literally have to put it in his ass. Here is Count Draculus compared next to the my re-release of Mindwipe. And again, I do have to admit, the wingspan on these guys definitely is quite impressive for a deluxe class. And then here is Count Draculus compared next to the crossover's Ectotron in his Ecto-1 mode. So anyway, that is basically it for the comparisons. And that is basically it for my review on the Transformers crossover's Draculus. And yeah, I definitely do think the figure has his merits and he definitely has a lot of his positives more than his negatives. Because again, I like how the crossover is throughout the whole figure and in both modes, this guy just feels very cohesive and he doesn't feel very half and half. The only issues I have with him is the same issues I had with the original Mind Wipe. Even though the cape does feel tacked on, I do like that it, I do still really like it. It definitely adds to the playability of the figure. I definitely spent way too much time trying to get this guy into as many cape configurations as I could. And overall, I still think it just adds to the charm of the figure. Because again, it makes him just really, really unique. And yeah, this figure surprisingly doesn't suck. That's the last one, I swear. So if I had to give this figure a rating, honestly, I give him a solid 9 out of 10. My, like I said, I've had a lot of fun with this guy, even despite some of those issues that the Mind Wipe figure had. Like I said, if he just didn't have those issues, this guy would have been a solid 10 out of 10, because I just had so much fun playing with this guy. Like, he's just, and because and the, again, the cape just really adds to all that. So yeah, that's basically it for this review. If you guys did enjoy the video, be sure to give me a like on the video. Comment down below what you guys think. Subscribe to the channel for more action figure videos. And I'll see you guys next year for All Hallows Eve. <laughs>